finally got it to work after a fashion. I'm using bench view, and I had to um, trick the Rigols into thinking they were different kinds of meters, and I managed to get the volts and the amps to be recorded at the same time. The motor's still turning, and you can see there's the milliamp draw, and there's the voltage at the moment. There's the voltage drop here, and there's the amp drop there. What we're going to try and do is export those two figures and combine them, that is multiply one by the other, to give us the amount of power, and we should be able to draw a power curve. So I'm doing the um, lead carbon battery at the moment, because that's the one I wanted to test anyway. And here you can see it's charged, and it's charge time, and obviously it's drawing nothing at that time. So we'll let it die, and then we'll see if we can export those figures and do an Excel spreadsheet. If that works, then we'll do the hemp battery. But just getting this far, I consider a huge success. I cobbled this together a little bit um, because I'm still waiting for the license to so cobble together the uh, display and the software, the data logging software. We want some kind of idea of where we are. Now what I've done is I've taken one of these um, CR2032 Panasonic lithium batteries and it's between a couple of bits of zinc there and I've clipped it up to the whole setup that we're normally using to run the motor and we're going to log it basically. Now these are primary batteries so we should expect a higher energy density out of them. But let's run it and see what happens and um, see what we get from this thing. And there we go, we just start logging that uh, milliamp draw and the voltage drop. And you can see it's about 126 milliamps and it's dropped quite quickly actually to um, 877 millivolts. So we'll just run that until it's out and then we'll have a look and see what kind of energy is on there. Okay, stop. It stopped about there, so you can see it lasted more or less six minutes. We ought to see that better when we export the, the figures. And you can see where the drop was where I connected it, and this is the long, slow discharge that it went through. So we're looking at the voltage here. Here's the amps, so I had nothing shot up. And then dropped down again. You can see here's where we disconnected it and it dropped to zero. So these are the two points here that correlate, and these two points here and here that correlate to when we actually connected it up. So what we can do now is export those figures into a spreadsheet, combine them, and we can get the power out of it. This is getting really quite exciting. But that was from um, this lithium iron here. So if I just pull that out, then I drained that until it wouldn't turn the motor anymore. So this was one single lithium primary cell. This is what we're using as our kind of benchmark test. Okay. This has actually given uh, some interesting and, in fact, surprising results. Okay, so uh, what we did, remember, was charge up the lead uh, battery and then take the primary lithium battery. Now, sure enough, the lithium battery is much smaller than the lead battery. There you go. Give you an idea of actually how big it is. Because this is 25 square centimetres and this is um, 2 centimetres round. So there's quite a big difference in the size there. You get quite a few of these on here, okay? But it's still really interesting because um, here is the lithium now you can see that the lithium here started at 0.3. Now remember, this is actually voltage times amps. So what we're looking at here is the watts, the watts per second actually. Um, and you can see this really sharp fall off of the lithium. And then it begins to fade like you would expect it until it's run for about 240 seconds. A little bit more actually, but more or less that. Um, and then I disconnected it. Now you're not seeing the rise up because I just took those out in the figures. I, I basically took the volts and the amp readings that we got from the meters, put them into Excel, multiplied the two by each other, and then drew this graph of it. And I also added up the watt seconds to give you the number of joules, and it turns out this is four, more or less. Now here's the leg um, that we did. It actually started much higher in terms of power output, and you can see the fall off is actually much lower, and it's quite a lot less steep here. Now, it could be because it's much bigger, of course, uh, but it ran for about roughly the same, same time, actually around about 220, but roughly about the same time, and that gave me 9. So here we've got 4, here we've got 9, and remember these are our volt times amps as the meter read them, and it gives us a kind of comparative. I mean, we have to take it with a little pinch of salt in that, you know, this one is uh, 3 millimeters thick and 2 centimeters round, so there's a fair bit of material, it's also a primary battery, whereas this one is uh, 5 centimetres by 5 centimetres and 0.1 of a millimetre thick. So I think it's quite telling actually that this one here has twice the power of this one here. I'm not sure we could fold that up into this space, I don't know if we could do that or not, 
but it's certainly really, really exciting as a result that the um, lead battery is performing um, pretty capably in terms of a primary lithium ion. Now remember, it, this is non-rechargeable. On this, once this is dead, it's dead. And this can be recharged and recharged and recharged. Now I think those are telling results, and obviously the next thing to do is to do the um, hemp battery, which is exactly what I'm going to do next. Unfortunately, I've got to go away for around um, five days, so I wanted to get this one done just to give you some idea of comparisons and this really bad battery they've been working with. And this really bad battery actually is getting quite close to um, the power of lithium ions. That's pretty cool. But it's probably going to be a bit of a delay before I do the hemp because I've, I've got to um, be away for five days. I'm going to try and do it now, but if I can't do it, you'll just have to wait until I get back. And I'm hoping that the licenses will be back so it's not quite so cobbled together. But even in the cobbled together terms, like I say, this, this one is comparing quite nicely to this one. And I thought that was really cool, so I wanted to share it with you. Anyway, I hope that was of interest, and those are interesting power graphs. Thank you very much for watching.